Hello everyone and welcome to my final video on digital archaeology. The first covered exploring archaeological structures and places within a virtual space, that being Minecraft, and the second explored the concept of digital sentimentality, how something in a virtual world can have real world history behind it, and thus sentimentality. In this final video I'll be going into detail on Mortonia, an archaeology themed Minecraft server which follows all of the tenets and principles I have outlined briefly in the previous two videos. Mortonia was first created on the 1st of April 2019 by myself and a friend. Since then it has grown and developed a digital tapestry of history naturally and it's been nurtured as basically a side project to show that a digital space can have history as rich as the real world. So in this video I'll be going through the timeline, basically the reasons why this is interesting to me, uh, the concept of keeping annals to, de to um, detail this digital history, we'll do some sightseeing, and then maybe some invite links if you want to join yourself if you are an epic gamer. So where better to start than the name, Mortonia named after Sir Mortimer Wheeler, a favourite archaeologist of me and my friend when we first made it on the 1st of April. So, what did we build on that first day? Well, it was this. Except it didn't look quite as run down back then over a year and a half ago. And that is a brilliant example to start off with on time within a digital world. Named the first fort, this was a base for me and my friend. We had all the apparatus set up here that you need to survive in this digital game. There weren't any holes in the ceiling, nor was there vegetation growing all around it. There was even a roof as well. But, as you can see, a year and a half in the real world may not be much time. But in this reality, it's eroded, much like a historical site in the real world would. So this is just one bottled example of the idea behind giving these virtual spaces history, creating a timeline, a tapestry to then, you know, build stories around, build a project around. This is a project for me. And I hope you find it as interesting as I do. If you're lost, then don't worry, just treat this as the real world. So where do you learn about history in the real world? Well, go to a museum. Or you can read books. Well, I'm going to show you both now as I whiz past a cathedral inspired by medieval Europe designs. Obviously that clock face is a bit different to what they've had. A uh, Roman amphitheatre down below. Medieval jousting arena. Oh, and look, a medieval inspired castle. Obviously some fantastical liberties have been taken um, with the construction of these archaeological structures but they are all inspired by history and that's a key point to remember almost everyone on this minecraft server is either a student of archaeology a student of history or someone with a passion for either of the two and these people come from all across the world and at the moment we have well many regular players not that many but enough uh, and and they have created this digital timeline so this right here, obviously it isn't inspired by any particular historical period, but it is worth bringing up. This is a statue um, which I'm, I built to commemorate the one year anniversary of this server. So now, whenever you walk past this statue, you will know that it was built for that special occasion. And as the years go on, the significance of this structure will grow and grow. So let's continue talking about time but let's just say let me say sorry I am sorry about the quality of this video I do not own any posh recording software anyway this as it says on the tin is the Museum of Mortonia a museum built within a digital space with artifacts relics and exhibits all from outside this is a collection of history, not real history, but digital history. So allow me to give you a tour. 
I myself built it on the 17th of March earlier this year, again in celebration of the then upcoming one year celebrations. And here we have it. It's not modelled after any museum in real life, but the idea of storing old things to um, highlight some knowledge, it's the same. Does what it says on the tin. It's a timeline, an abridged timeline, mind you, of all the events that have taken place since the 1st of April 2019. Feel free to read. You can pause the video at any time. I will be going more in detail on this later. Here are the kingdoms of this digital world from the first one created on the uh, bottom right there to the most recent, the um, rainbow looking one up there. Back in April of 2019, the St. George's Cross was the only kingdom. But as the months have gone on, more and more people have joined this world and the culture has expanded into all these new sort of societies if you will each one is made each of these flags uh, represents a kingdom which is ruled over by either one or multiple people again this sort of creates a digital representation of the politics of multiple kingdoms in the real world as i've said in the first video in this series um, if a player makes a roman inspired society they can then adopt the politics of the Roman Empire or Republic if they want to and then interact with all these other historical inspired societies. So from politics you get history as well and from politics you of course get wars. This is an exhibit uh, about a battle which took place last August between myself, some mates and some people who aren't my mates. <laughs> um, I joke. But this is armour that was worn last August. To anyone who's not familiar with this history, this is just, you know, a piece of armour in a game. But to us, that is months old. That is old in the, in the case of this server. In a similar way to how the Berlin Wall was destroyed and tourists took home bits of the, the brick and mortar. Right here are the original bricks from a similarly oppressive structure built by someone we nicknamed the Sage. There are some fantasy elements to this, and obviously it's a, it's a game built for all ages, so I'm, I'm not saying this is as you know detailed or as accurate as real world history, but the tenets are the same. Some more old relics. Now, be amazed, for this is the oldest thing on Mortonia, as it says on the tin. This was built by me, well, crafted by me, all the way back on the 1st of April 2019. It is incredibly old in the context of this Minecraft server, and thus has the digital sentimentality. Players come to this museum knowing the significance of this relic, and know not to disturb it. People also donate relics such as these. These were built back in November, so they, they too are old. The fossil up there, obviously Natural History Museum inspired. So all these empty lecterns, and in these cases the full lecterns, these are pretty important um, to talk about digital history with. So let me go back to the first one. These are annals of history. These record every single event that has happened since the 1st of April. And they go on for 50 pages each, as said in the previous video. And there are now, let me see, 21... 27 of them with the 27th still in progress at the time of this video and don't worry i will be marking the recording of this video as an event in the timeline thus giving the 11th of july some significance so think of it this way 
each of these books has 50 pages. Each of the pages has, I don't know, some amount of characters. These record the political events, the construction efforts, the war efforts, or basically anything that happens is recorded in these pages. And when people visit this museum, they can read from these pages. And then when they visit the places mentioned in the pages, there you have some digital history. So let's go upstairs and see what the first floor exhibits have in store. Obviously you can't swim up a waterfall in real life. Here you have it, some more dates. The importance of dates within this digital space really do, as I say, give, give that historical weight to these virtual items. These were collected on the 1st of April 2020, so a couple months ago. Again, this is another interesting piece of digital history. This is a weapon forged by another classmate of mine, and he has had this sword for months, made it in 2019, I believe, and then donated it to the museum because he knew that the digital history surrounding this item was important for this little project of mine. This is another interesting exhibit. Of course, it's, this isn't interesting if you if you aren't already interested in digital history, but here you have two items which we discovered in a mine shaft, which nobody we know made. So th this is someone who has joined the, the server, left a digital footprint, and then disappeared. Nobody knows who made the mystery mine, hence the name. So who did these relics belong to? Well, that's a mystery. Here we have some more flags belonging to the sub-regions of a kingdom. As I said in previous videos, Minecraft, because it's aimed at all ages, can be as simple or as complex as one desires. You can do nothing but build a hut out of wood if you want, or you can create religions, um, states, regions, hybrid religions, you can do whatever you want. This right here is the work of a good friend, another colleague, and as you can see from the signs, these flags are an ongoing work from last July, well, almost a year ago at the time of this video being uploaded. So again, the naming conventions for these regions are inspired, I think he told me, Estonian history. So e even though this isn't directly archaeology eh, or history related, excuse me. The concept behind splitting a kingdom into these regions and keeping a, uh, a language between them very much is. Now this individual, um, this colleague of mine, has actually created a language based on Estonian history and that has its own um, regional dialects between these different flagged areas. So again, that's digital history at its core, and he chose to make this game as complex as possible. So this is another ongoing series of books detailing... Oh, let me get back to page one. Detailing the weapons that people create. Now there are four volumes to this series, each one again with 50, um, 50 pages. And aside from being a bit of fun, um, the ethos behind writing catalogues such as that is to, you know, it's generating more digital history. I, I keep repeating the word digital history, but it really is just the essence behind this project. These are some more recent relics. If you follow the, uh, the game, you'll know that these are very recent. <laughs> so here is uh, something interesting. This is a map of the rail system, which I mainly designed um, to connect all of these various kingdoms, which you saw earlier with the flags. So back when we first made the, the world, on the 1st of April 2019, we had to walk everywhere, much like a medieval peasant would. As the months went by, we developed roads, 
to more easily lay out the pathways to these different locations and to, you know, make, make the journey safe and less arduous. Uh, now, the natural evolution from roads are boats and rails. So, in keeping with the industrial revolution of the real world, the same thing is happening here. Another example of history. These two swords were made by an American visitor who joined the realm last October. He didn't do much, he just made a little hut, made these two swords, and then we haven't heard from him since. And then I recently rediscovered what he had made. And thus, these swords, like with everything else I've spoken about in this video, had history. I hope that segment in the museum has outlined what exactly digital history is, if the uh, previous two videos where I repeat the phrase a hundred times haven't already. So you've got the annals, which I was directly inspired to write by reading real-world annals for my dissertation topic, the annals of St. Bertin, of Fulda, of um, St. Vast, these uh, Carolingian Empire annals which record year-by-year -year events of Viking raids. They, they are so interesting to read from a contemporary perspective, and that same idea of reading things which were written in the past to then learn about things which you can still see to this day, I then took that to this virtual space. Here is another ruin, which deserves some mentioning. This was originally a very nice castle, actually, built by an American visitor to the server. Again, highlighting the international prowess of this very small <laughs> virtual world. But anyway, he didn't return to the server for quite some time, so we made the elective decision to turn what he had built into a ruin. Now, when you walk past this, you know it's old and broken. So, time for some sightseeing. If you'd watched the first video in this series, you'll know that I'm now entering the cat's brain. Not a real cat's brain, just the name for the Neolithic hut which this build is based off of. So, bringing it back to what I originally started this series on, in SketchUp, which is a 3D imagery software used for recreating historical spaces, you can't walk in and around like you would um, like you would be if you were a Neolithic settler. You can't explore the space that you've just built. There is something very, very interesting to me about creating somewhere from history and then exploring it. Likewise, if I were to explore the ruins over there, which I just showed, if I were to walk through them, I'd be walking through history. Not real history, but digital history. So, the next few bits of the video will be me showing places on the server which I think should be showed. Places from history, places from archaeology, or just areas where the digital history is worth talking about. So, I will see you in the next one. This right here is an Iron Age Cranog inspired by a YouTube video which had the same design. So this is just a blocky interpretation of, as I said, a Cranog. But what's important to me is, what's interesting to me, is that this design is directly copied from a video which built the same Cranog. So if you were to see this, this build within the, the server that I'm now in, you would know that it has not been built until after the upload date of the original design, which was 2017. As I went into detail in the previous video, these YouTubers who come up with architectural styles can influence digital history. Obviously, you'll know because Mortonia was created in 2019 that anything on the server isn't older than 2019, but the point still stands. This is another interesting monument. So this is a memorial to a raid against this village from uh, the monsters of this uh, fictional reality. So we commemorated what happened on the 4th of November 2019 with a little monument. So now when you walk past it, you'll know, ah, oh, something happened here several months ago. Here is a quaint 
vaguely medieval, vaguely European fishing village, and in the distance two very big towers. As I fly over these roads, you can see how they carve through the natural wilderness. Without these roads, exploring from place to place would be very difficult, and so the foundation of these pathways was paramount as more and more people joined the server. You see me now coming to a Fatoria, a trading post. Now, in the context of the server, this is uh, situated between one kingdom and another, so it, it genuinely, generally, sorry, functions as a trading post would in real life. Again, bringing these real world elements into a virtual and simplified space. Here is a fortress built along this major road to stop the advance of enemy kingdoms into the one over there. So, in this tour, I am just going along the major roads. Now, each of them has a distinct purpose to link one kingdom to the other, much the same way a road in real life would be originally created back then in the past. Now, this is interesting. Here is a outpost of the kingdom which we were in at the very start of the video, and right beside it is a boat from an enemy kingdom, which is pressing uh, naval forces on this small station. And this railway right here links directly where we were at the start of the video to... Drum roll, please. Oh, it's taking a little longer than I expected. <laughs> Uh, links to this massive castle. So this castle didn't always have a uh, railway connected to it. This was added when we wanted to, you know, link up places with rail. So not only is this a, just a gorgeous looking medieval castle, we also have evidence of a siege on the outside. These siege tanks are directly inspired by a tablet depicting an Assyrian siege vehicle, from the 2nd century BC, I believe, if my memory serves me well. So we used these siege vehicles when we were attacking this castle. And now the castle is under a different ownership to the one it was before. Again, highlighting the politics of this digital space and how events such as a siege can become moments in history and then influence uh, how the rest of the server unfolds. This right here is emblematic of the religions I mentioned earlier. We have a few major religions in this digital world, each one inspired by a real-world faith. Now, these faiths interact with each other much the same as uh, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, all the other ones in interact with each other in the real world, i.e. they are not friends. Here are some boats from the enemy kingdom I mentioned earlier, and also an enemy religion who want to depose the iconography inside this abbey. Now, here is something that I've just stumbled upon. This is a player in the server sailing in an artificial sea that was just created today on the day of recording, the 11th of July. So, although this looks very natural, this was originally a savanna, and it has been completely leveled out and replaced by water in order to encourage naval access between two faraway kingdoms. So, it's a monumental task, a Sisyphean accomplishment. However, now you can sail between it. That is history at its finest. You will now sail through something that was made on the 11th of July 2020, which will be there forever. The flags outside this castle have changed numerous times. They were originally all St George's flags, like that one over there. Then they were a uh, different rendition of the same flag due to a civil war in this kingdom. Now, after unifying with another kingdom, they have this St. George's slash purple design. So again, history. Sentimentality. Right here is the hospital I built on the day my granddad passed away. Now when I walk past it, it reminds me of him. This right here is a goose because we are all from York and we love geese. This was originally built on the 16th of July last year and it was moved very recently to make way for this Lord of the Rings looking tower. So this used to be a pretty harmless looking mountain with that goose on top, but due to renovations someone wanted to construct this instead. 
that's history. This house right here was built in May, I believe, of 2019 by person A. It then passed ownership onto person B before being owned by person C. It is a house originally built by one person last year, now owned by someone else. History. Here we have the ruins, or rather the obliterated landscape, that used to be a small little region on the outskirts of a larger kingdom. The people who owned this region left on bad terms, and what they left behind suffered the consequences. History. This right here, a pyramid which was once where that mushroom was, and was moved to the left to make way for a railway. HS2, anyone? History. Started off as a small cottage, which then grew into a sheep statue, and then a castle. History. The ancient Egypt-inspired kingdom of this gentleman here, which he has requested for me to show, and a library containing every book ever written on the server. That is just, you know, brilliant. I really do encourage everyone who, who joins this world to maximise the potential of digital history, and this is just a perfect example. A library containing a copy of every piece of written work made by anyone on the server. Impressive. Here is a dock which has prospered very recently, over the last few weeks. It contains boats leading to every major kingdom. Each one will lead directly there. So again, this is just showing the networking of these political powers within this digital space. This is a trade hub now, with all these boats linking to other locations. Let me show you a few of them. A small settler's hut with a massive underground chasm somewhere down there. A naval battlefield with a sunken shipwreck over there. This was a, uh, an occasion where three kingdoms went head to head against each other in this watery zone. Now this isn't this ship isn't based on anything in real life, but it is quite cool. As is this uh, Oriental inspired city, airships notwithstanding. But this is a you know pretty faithful uh, recreation of a an, an Asian city. The buildings that look out of place, that green one there and the uh, sandy looking one, they are embassies to other kingdoms, as are the boats. So again, the, the politics of one location influencing the structural design of another. These two fortresses are very imposing, controlling naval access into the harbour. Multiculturalism within a virtual space that you like? Then look no further than here, a trading district of a major city, a melting pot of all these different societies built by other players in one location. Now, it is incredibly vibrant, and there all these are shops selling goods from one corner of this digital world to the other. There is even an archaeological dig site over here, a Neolithic stone circle with some tents. Ooh, researching some artifacts. Oh, look, a Roman pillar. History. A lumberjack's cottage that then grew into an industrial canal which cuts through a very difficult to navigate forest. This canal was then joined by a parallel road. So for a long time, when the road didn't exist, the canal was the only way through this forest. Now you have a pick. A recreation of Clifford's Tower. Imposing walls of a Roman citadel. With very little inside it as of yet. But fear not because right there is a boat and a recreation of the Pharos of Alexandria. Even further beyond that, the ruins of a kingdom that some person made back in... I think it was June? It was destroyed in November by yours truly, once they said that they had left the server. So, that wasn't an act of spite, that was to create some history. Now, here is all that remains of a once mighty kingdom. And right next to it, the now free ground has been capitalised on by another kingdom, creating a coastal trading hub and a temple for their religion so that it can spread throughout the ocean. Oh, I forgot that was even there. This right here is the plan for a rail link. So one way will go to another kingdom, in however many miles that is, and the other one will link that way. A now server-wide famous map room 
which displays the cartography of the region. If I go down this spirally staircase, so I could just drop down. So this is pretty impressive. I didn't even build this. This is created by someone else. This is a full map of the region of this kingdom with names of the islands and the continents and the location of the map room we're in right now. So this is history. This is helping people explore. Without this map, uh, exploring would be a lot more difficult. Much the same way how when Vikings visited America, it was a lot more difficult for them than it was for Columbus and everyone who came after him. Here he is, the man responsible for removing the aforementioned goose statue. He is now upgrading the structure we saw earlier. History in progress. A QR code that links to a Rick Astley video. Never going to give you up. This is again something interesting. So, so this used to be a big stone pillar. When the person who made it left, it became an obsidian pillar. It is now known as Figs Rock, named after the person who originally built it history. And right next to it, some more history. This petrified tree, it used to just be the only thing on this hillscape, but in idolisation of the player that it was built after, flowers, torches and this big red fungi have sprouted. History. An old battle site once again. So this was a military garrison training ground for to, to prepare troops for a battle. Here are some trebuchets and a fortress which was built for one side to rally against the other. So th the battle actually took place in between these two massive walls in uh, August. It was the battle I mentioned right at the start of the video in the museum. Since then, well, these massive walls have cropped up, completely overpowering this original boundary. Once again, history. This used to be a wild, untamed landscape. Now it is a completely fenced off kingdom with a central keep, artificial canals, airships, ruins, it's got everything. History. A river galley which was originally built for Kingdom A, then taken over by Kingdom B. History. Likewise, a flag demarcating the end of a kingdom, taken over by Kingdom B. And a castle. Same story. And as you can see from these glowing pillars, this will be turned into a rail station. History. Coming up, some more history. This right here was originally just this mountain safe house. But, as the months went on, it developed into a town. History. Wild and untamed swamp, owned by no kingdoms, just a crime syndicate. So, the ownership of this swamp area is passed down through whoever claims it. Once again, highlighting the historical elements of this digital space. So, this is an open cry. If you join the server, do you want to capture this swamp? Please do. There was even a battle over here to determine that fate, as evidenced by the remnants, and a fountain commemorating the victor. The spread of a major religion into the swamp, a Greek Acropolis. Funny story about this place, so not only is it really cool, but there was also a turtle that found its way into the temple purely by accident, or perhaps it was placed. So that happened about a month ago. Since then, a religion has formed over the turtle highlighting the historical significance of a comparatively minor event. Need I say it again? History. A new fork in the road when a new kingdom was founded. Beacons which were originally built to link kingdoms together before there were roads. History. 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 Hematology. Homeopathy. Hadrada. Hovis wholemeal bread. Harold Godwin's heretics. Horticultural expertise. Heinous crimes. Hemp. History Channel. Did aliens build this? No. Someone on Minecraft did. Hastings. Haunting. Hunger. Hungry. Hennessy whiskey. Hello there. Hell. Honk. And finally, history. I hope you enjoyed the brief tour of Mortonia, an archaeology themed Minecraft server. If you are interested in joining, then email me, there should be a link somewhere, and I will gladly let you. So, that concludes both the final video in this series and the series in general. I hope you at least have a better understanding of digital history if you weren't already familiar, and if you were, I hope you took some enjoyment out of talking about these topics and exploring what people have built. So. 
If any of this interests you, then let me know, get in touch, or ring the bell, whatever. I have been Alex Harvey, and I hope you enjoyed. What is the future of Mortonia? Ooh, there's a cliffhanger for you. The answer is something beginning with H.